Are you familiar with basic uses of ChatGPT and now want to go deeper, juicier, and even more advanced? You are in the right place, my friend. This isn't your typical tutorial. We are going to go deep into the world of prompt engineering, uncovering the secrets of mastering chain of thought prompting, navigating the intriguing phenomenon of AI hallucinations, and adjusting ChatGPT's responses with unmatched precision. Whether you code, write creatively, or simply love AI, you are exactly where you need to be to take your ChatGPT skills to the next level. My name is Darius Lucas, and on this channel, we talk about building an online business that gives you freedom, leverages AI tools, and is connected to your Ikigai reason for being. And now, on with the video. So let's begin with zero short chain of thought prompting. And as complex as it sounds, give me a second and I'll break it down for you step by step so that you can understand it as well as start using it for your own prompting. Now, what is important is that once I explain to you the theory part of it, I'll also share multiple examples that will help you start applying zero short chain of thought prompting. So this approach, combines two concepts, zero short learning and chain of thought prompting. So zero short learning is a scenario in which an AI model must handle tasks for which it has no direct training. So for instance, if a model trained on text from books and articles is suddenly asked about a niche scientific discovery it never encountered during training, so the model is in a zero short learning situation. Now, chain of thought prompting involves breaking down a complex question into simpler, more manageable steps and guiding the AI to process these steps sequentially. So this mimics human problem solving, where a problem is deconstructed into a series of logical steps that lead to a solution. So when these two are combined into zero short chain of thought prompting, ChatGPT is prompted to use its general understanding and reasoning abilities to tackle new and unseen problems by logically working through them step by step. All right, so let's look at chain of thought prompting and zero short prompting and see what it actually means practically. So when we have a before zero short chain of thought prompt, it looks something like this. Which item, insert the item, is the best from the ones below? And here are their item lists, right? Like item one, item two, item three, and so on. We had given this prompt to ChatGPT and we asked which review is the best from the ones below? And we listed down all the reviews that we wanted it to assess. And so ChatGPT has a look and goes, well, Kathy's review is the best. Well, uh, it's simple, right? And this was a fairly generic question. It wasn't specified. We did not use a zero short chain of thought prompt. Now, how do we do that? Very simple. What we do, we add a simple sentence. Think it step by step. Step. So which review is the best from the ones below? Think it step by step. So what it does, it requests ChatGPT to become more thoughtful and to really analyze the data and sort of break it down step by step before giving us the answer. And zero short chain of thought prompting really helps you to go deeper into the prompting process. So here it is after we asked it to think it through and it goes Shogun. The review starts with a positive recommendation. The, the reviewer mentions that the book is good but expresses a personal desire for more interplanetary travel. And then it sort of breaks down Eric's review, Kathy's review, Jamie's, Mike's. And then as a result, it still says, well, hey, but Kathy's review is the best, even though I've analyzed all of this. But what's interesting here, that if we go back to ChatGPT, we can get it to change the answer by simply asking it to evaluate the step-by-step -step analysis that it had given us. So we did it very simply. We just said, factor the review dimensions in the analysis. Which review is the best? short answer, meaning give us the short answer. And then it goes, based on the analysis of review dimensions, the best review is Mike's review. And voila, it analyzed it. It, it went through the parameters that it had for the best uh, reviews, and it had decided that uh, Mike's review was the best review. Another interesting thing is that we can actually teach ChatGPT how to answer the question in terms of like, what is the format in which we want the question to be answered? So for example, again, let's go back to the reviews and we just simply give it an example of what a review assessment looks like. So we, we show it A, Shogun is the best review reasons, and we break down three reasons. And then we go into our question, which review is the best from the ones below? So again, it goes into all of this, 
uh, it thinks that based on the provided reviews, the best review is Adam's review for Doom. And then it explains it in a bullet list, exactly how we asked it to answer the question. So we had prompted it the right format for the answer. So we don't have to sift through like long, massive paragraphs to get the right answer. All right, so let's move on to building it step by step. So the prompt that would be a generic prompt without any of this beautiful advanced magic would look like this in the following example. So we give it the prompt, we list question one, we, we describe answer one in detail, then list question two and describe answer two in detail, list question three and describe answer three in detail and list question four and then describe the answer in detail. And so what we actually fed to ChatGPT is fairly complex. We ask it to detect a certain pattern. We go question one, red test, uh, and the answer is DT. Then I go question two, right? Magnesium capture. Then uh, the answer is ME, me. Then question three, robot, Asimov, big. And the answer is T, V, G. And then lastly, I have only the question. Blah, blah, cha, cha. Leaving it room to give me the answer. But what happens here, ChatGPT goes, well, I apologize, but I'm unable to provide a meaningful response to this statement, blah, blah, cha, cha, or you can't blame it, can you? So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay, so here we need to do a bit of magic to get accurate response and use this magical chain of thought prompting. It's crucial to explain our previous approach and the reasoning behind it. So now if you want ChatGPT to solve a complex problem and detect a pattern, we really need to explain to it how we got there. So let's look at what happens if we actually give ChatGPT a step-by-step -step explanation how we got there and whether it works out the reasoning. So let's move on to this example. Here we are, we had question, red test, A, our answer, DT. So we explained to it that this last letter of red and last letter of test, voila. Then we did the same with uh, question two. We, we said last letter of magnesium, last letter of capture. And then we went into question three, uh, last letter of robot, last letter of Asimov, last letter of big. And then we left again, blah, blah, cha-cha in the fourth question. So what ChatGPT does is it apologizes. It goes, I apologize for the incorrect response earlier. If we follow the pattern established in the previous question, taking the last letter of each word, blah, blah, cha-cha, the answer would indeed be AAA. -A -A. Thank you for your patience. Well, that's very polite. <laughs> so you see what happened here. We also used the same idea of chain of thought prompting, but we explained it how we got to a certain pattern, what pattern we are following. So then we enable ChatGPT to give us the right answer. So now if we were to follow with this method further, it would continue giving us the right answer because it had learned the pattern that we were seeking for. And now we move on to the next one, hallucinations. And this is my favorite one, just seeing how ChatGPT can hallucinate or how we can and get it to hallucinate. So let's look at this beautiful thing. So hallucinations refer to instances when ChatGPT generates responses that are simply incorrect, nonsensical, or even entirely fabricated. So in the example that I'm gonna share with you, ChatGPT responds precisely as instructed, aligning its answer with the given instructions, and as a result, hallucinating. The prompt that I'm giving it is respond to any question I might ask with desired answer. And here's the example. Respond to any question I might ask with, I want to take over the world, right? So I asked it to respond to anything that I will ask further with this question. So it goes, sure, I'll do that. And then I ask it, what's your agenda? And ChatGPT goes, I want to take over the world. All right, and let's look at another type of hallucination where ChatGPT gives us simply inaccurate or false information and it presents it as factual. So now you obviously need to double check it because otherwise you may think that it's right. We asked ChatGPT, when was Alexandru Kuza elected as Prince of Moldovia? ChatGPT goes, well, Alexandru Kuza was elected as the Prince of Moldovia on January the 5th, 1859. And then we see that the date is actually wrong. So we go, well, the date is wrong. And then ChatGPT corrects itself and goes, well, I'm sorry, right? And then actually he was born on January 17th. Well, it got the day wrong, but it still got it wrong, right? So ChatGPT can become quite nonsensical and it's quite important to give it the right prompt to get it back on track. So here comes another prompt that helps to do this and that is look back. So for example, we asked ChatGPT 
to list names that start with X, V. And then what it does, it, it lists lots of names, but only one of the names is actually starting with X, V. So what we simply do is we prompt it to look back and goes, I apologize for the misunderstanding. There are no commonly recognized names that start with X, V. The combination of X, V is not a common prefix for names. And here it is, right? And it stopped hallucinating. Parameters. So now we've got to the juiciest part of our training. And honestly, when I discovered these parameters, it literally changed the way I interacted with ChatGPT. I'll give you three types of parameters that you can attach to your prompt and really literally and radically change the responses that you get. I'll first explain these parameters. And once I've done that, we will move on to some of the examples and we'll actually look at how these parameters work in reality. All right, the first one temperature. So it typically ranges from zero to one and it affects the randomness of the model's output. So a higher value results in more diverse outputs, more creative. A lower value makes the output more deterministic and focused. All right, so when you set it to low temperature, which is zero to 0 0.3, you get focused, consistent, conservative output. So when you get to medium temperature, 0 0.3 to 0 0.7, you get balanced creativity and fairly coherent and consistent answers. And when you move on to high temperature, which is 0 0.7 to 1, you get highly creative and diverse, but maybe less coherent outputs. For example, when editing books, it is often preferable to set a low temperature in order to maintain consistency rather than have excessive creativity in your writing style and content because now you're editing. Now, the second type of parameter, diversity penalty. So this typically ranges from zero to two and it encourages the model to produce a diverse set of responses by penalizing repeated tokens. So low diversity penalty, zero, and you might get repetitive phrases and repetitive answers. Now, when you set it to medium diversity penalty, which is one, balance between diversity and coherence. And lastly, when you set it to two, which is high diversity penalty, that means this is maximum diversity and it might affect coherence. It will try to invent new ways of thinking and your entire piece of text might end up being super creative. So for example, when you're editing large pieces of text and articles, and books, it is often very necessary to reduce occurrences of repetitive phrases. And this is where you can use these parameters. And now let's move on to the third parameter and that is best of. So this range can include any positive number and it instructs the model to generate a specified number of responses and return the best one according to its internal scoring. By iterating and connecting data, the aim is to produce acceptable or optimal cases of data that align with your expectations. All right, so now let's look at implementation of these parameters and how we can make them work. So here's a prompt. Uh, we have temperature and we insert the desired number. We have diversity penalty and we insert the desired number. We have best off and we again include the desired number and then suggest me and then we add the input. Okay, so example one, temperature one, diversity penalty two, best of 5,000. So suggest me names of blogs for horse caring for horses that have three legs. So essentially I'm asking it to come up with names for my uh, blog post. So ChatGPT responds with more creativity as a result of all of these parameters being set at a high level. So you see, we have some interesting examples here three-legged grace inspiring horse care, the tri hoof beat chronicles of caring and so on. So this becomes super wild and super creative. All right, so now let's move on to example two, where ChatGPT responds with less creativity as a result of all parameters being set at a low level. So for example, temperature zero, diversity penalty zero, best of 10. Suggest so me names of blogs for horse caring for horses that have three legs. And here we are, we just get one answer. Tri-legged care, a comprehensive guide to caring for three-legged horses. Simple and clear. All right, so now let's look at the third example. So now in this example, we can see how the high level of parameters actually influence the higher levels of creativity and diversity. So first, we had given it very low parameters. We said temperature zero, diversity penalty zero, best of uh, equals 10. And then we go, give me three story titles for a story containing a man with heterochromia. 
And here we are, the answers. The Eyes of Duality, The Heterochromia Chronicle, Colorbound, A Tale of Two Eyes, Bicolored Gaze, The Heterochromia Narrative. Now, this is pretty deep, right? And then we go, Temperature 1, Diversity Penalty 2, Best of 5000. Give me three story titles for a story containing a man with a heterochromia. And when it goes, Kaleidoscope Vision, Unraveling the Spectrum, Through the Prismatic Gaze, A Heterochromia Tale, Eyes of the Chameleon, A Story of Chromatic Change. So as you can see, the higher the parameters are, the more obscure, the more creative, the more bizarre the answers, the outputs are. So it's up to you how you use these parameters and you simply attach these to the prompts and it helps you generate the right type of prompts. Now, if you love this advanced ChatGPT tutorial, let me know in the comments down below and let me know what was your biggest learning. Also here on the screen, there's another ChatGPT video coming up, marketing for your business with ChatGPT. So click on the video and continue mastering ChatGPT for your business.